Good morning and a warm welcome to your show, Sunny Mornings in Encinitas. We're the daily podcast that gets you started on the right foot and always with a positive vibe. I'm your host, Melissa, and it's Monday, February 5th. You'll be interested to know today, 2,170 years ago, in 146 BC, the Punic Wars ended. The Third Punic War, the last of three between Rome and Carthage, came to an end, culminating in the final destruction of Carthage and the beginning of Roman hegemony over the Mediterranean. Now let's check out the weather in the Encinitas area. This morning, it's rainy and 58 degrees with 12 mile per hour wind. Tonight, the sun will set at 5.25 p.m. and it will rise again tomorrow at 6.39 a.m. It looks like we're in for a day of rain with a high near 59 and south wind 20 mile per hour with gusts as high as 25. Chance of precipitation is 70%. New rain amounts between a quarter and half of an inch. Tonight, rain with heavy downpours at times at a low around 55 with north wind 5 to 10 mile per hour. Chance of precipitation is 100%. New rain amounts between a half and three quarters of an inch. In the surf report. Monday, the surf scene could improve, especially in select spots, as the south-southwest swell peaks emerges with a westerly component, potentially creating peaky conditions. Though uncertain, some beach breaks might offer decent surfing opportunities. This blend of swells is expected to linger into Tuesday, but onshore wind might persist. We are also contending with a lot of rain. So be safe out there, kids. In Encinitas and North County, yikes. And it's five to eight feet and all the chop you can handle. Keep an eye out for sinkholes, mudslides, and the tax man. The first high tide Monday will be five feet around 5 a.m. with a minus half foot low tide around 1 p.m. The nearshore buoy at Scripps in La Jolla reads 59.5 degrees for the water temperature. Looking ahead in the weather, we'll see rain and thunderstorms on Tuesday, possibly heavy, with a high near 57 degrees and gusty wind. Tuesday night brings more rain and thunderstorms, cooling to 52. Wednesday and Thursday will be mostly cloudy with showers likely in highs around 57 degrees. Friday continues with a chance of showers, then a slightly warmer high near 58. Maybe see if you can score a free trial of Netflix. You can check out our movie recommendations on the Sunny Mornings Instagram pages. Bonjour, food enthusiasts. This podcast is brought to you by Versailles Cafe and Pastries in Encinitas. Nestled on El Camino Real South, just north of Encinitas Boulevard, this cafe is a haven for culinary delights. Indulge in their amazing Eggs Benedict or their gluten-free crepes. You can grab a panini for lunch or just breeze on through to get your morning coffee. They are open every day from eight to five. So stop on by and don't forget to tell them, Sunny Morning send you. In local news, a puppy named Richard, gravely ill with canine parvovirus, has been miraculously cured using a groundbreaking treatment. At only six weeks old and weighing under four pounds, Richard's prognosis was bleak. However, the Helen Woodward Animal Center administered the new canine parvovirus monoclonal antibody, making him the first dog to receive this treatment at the center. Unlike traditional treatments that manage symptoms, CPMA directly combats the virus. Remarkably, Richard responded overnight, reducing the treatment time from a week to just 24 hours and slashing costs from thousands to $200 per vial. This success signifies a significant advancement in treating this deadly canine illness. That just warmed me right up. If you wanna see a picture of Richard, head over to our Instagram page, just search for Sunny Mornings Podcast. Now on to sports. 
This weekend, the Pro Bowl games took place in Orlando, Florida. Looks like the NFC beat the ASC 64 to 59 in a game of flag football. I hope they had some nice weather. Only six more days until Super Bowl 58, folks. Also this weekend, the National Hockey League had their all-star game. This year, they play two different games of three-on-three -three with four different team captains drafting to build their all-star team. Team Matthews beat Team Hughes 6-5, and Team McDavid beat Team McKinnon 4-3. Hockey games resume on Monday, but the Ducks and Kings don't play their games until Thursday and Saturday, respectively. In the NBA, this weekend, the Lakers on the road beat the Knicks 113 to 105, and the Clippers, also on the road, beat the Heat 103 to 95. Tonight, the Lakers remain on the road to take on the Hornets. In other top news, the FIFA World Cup final in 2026 is set to be hosted in New York, triumphing over Dallas and Los Angeles. This highly anticipated event will take place at New Jersey's MetLife Stadium, a venue with a capacity of 82,500 and home to the NFL's New York Giants and New York Jets. Easily accessible from Manhattan, MetLife Stadium is a familiar venue for major events, having hosted sold-out concerts and a Super Bowl. New York Mayor Eric Adams and New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy actively promoted MetLife Stadium, highlighting the region's infrastructure and global appeal. The U.S., along with Canada and Mexico, are co-hosts for the 2026 World Cup. The tournament kicks off in Mexico City, with the U.S. and Canada hosting games in Los Angeles and Toronto. While Dallas lost the bid for the final, it will host nine games, including a semifinal more than any other city. The decision places New York at the forefront of the global sporting stage in July of 2026. Now on to business news. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, speaking on CBS 60 Minutes, indicates that interest rate cuts are on the horizon, but unlikely to occur in March. Despite Wall Street's expectations, the Fed is seeking more confidence in inflation moving closer to its 2% target before making such a move. Since April 2021, the Fed has implemented aggressive interest rate hikes to combat inflation. Now, with inflation rates easing and the U.S. economy showing strength, including significant job growth and high consumer sentiment, a rate cut seems imminent later this year. Powell emphasizes the importance of restoring price stability and the Fed's non-political stance despite congressional pressures for early rate cuts. The Fed also keeps a cautious eye on potential economic risks from geopolitical turmoil, though Powell remains optimistic about the economy's trajectory towards a soft landing. In crypto, Bitcoin is at 42,700, Ethereum is about 2,300, and Cardano is down to about 50 cents. Moving on to a more local vibe. In our community spotlight on health and wellness, we are working with a national Pilates studio to bring you some free classes, so listen up. Check out Club Pilates with several locations in the San Diego area. Pilates presents a comprehensive wellness approach, cultivating strength, reducing tension, and elevating mental well being. Scientific research affirms its benefits. So now you can check out Club Pilates for a free class with locations in Encinitas, Solana Beach, Oceanside, La Jolla, and more. Just be sure to tell them Sunny Morning sent you by. And now back to the show. Now let's talk more tech and crypto. In an intriguing court case, computer scientist Craig Wright claims he's the elusive Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin. Wright has been asserting this since 2016, and the upcoming trial in the UK High Court will scrutinize his claim. The Crypto Open Patent Alliance, also known as COPA, 
brought the case against Wright, challenging his claim, and the lawsuits he's filed asserting intellectual property rights over Bitcoin. COPA aims to get a declaration that Wright isn't the Bitcoin white paper's author and didn't write the original code, hoping to stop him from claiming otherwise. This trial has far-reaching implications, potentially impacting Bitcoin's future development and control. Wright's credibility and the authenticity of his documents will be key focus areas, with accusations of document forgery in the spotlight. If Wright is declared Nakamoto, it could grant him significant control over Bitcoin, potentially stifling its development. The outcome could influence global perceptions and legal rulings regarding Bitcoin's authorship. And in entertainment news, at the 2024 Grammy Awards last night, Taylor Swift surprised fans by announcing a new album, The Tortured Poets Department, set to release on April 19th. Contrary to expectations of her last album, Reputation, Taylor's version, Swift revealed this entirely new project while accepting the Best Pop Vocal Album Award for Midnight's. The album consists of 16 songs, plus a bonus track title, The Manuscript. Swift shared that she had kept this album a secret for two years. Her Instagram bio now intriguingly states, all's fair in love and poetry. Well, all righty folks, it's time for the quote of the day. And today, our quote comes from me. The secret to getting ahead is getting started. So on that note, let's get started. And that's a wrap for this morning. Remember to stay tuned tomorrow for more news and updates. Have an amazing day, my good friends. <laughs>